Hey guys, Jeffrey here with Auto Alchemy, and today I have a very special guest with me. I have Dave uh, from Dave Superpowers. Um, obviously a man who needs no introduction, but if you want to say something about your channel, kind of talk about your mission for a minute, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, sure. So we are trying to get some objectivity to personality typing. We're trying to just track personality in some way, shape, or form. And so we kind of have a double-blind procedure that we go through. It's me and Shannon kind of as a partner team. And we're able to get some consistency in tracking personality at this point. So that's kind of what we're at now. Yeah, some consistency is like so much more than <laughs> I think this uh, particular community has ever seen before. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you for joining me. First of all, it's, yeah, man. Uh, I'm a big fan of your channel, so it's great to have you here. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, so the reason that I wanted to talk to Dave is that we both have a shared interest in the hero's journey. Oh yeah, and uh, if you're not initiated in what that is, essentially it's Joseph Campbell's idea that there's kind of a blueprint or a skeleton that all or maybe just many stories kind of have in common. You start off with the no-name hero who goes out into the world after receiving his call to adventure, gets his butt kicked, and is transformed in the process, You know, bringing back some kind right. of gift to the world uh do you feel like there's anything in that summary that i missed that's about it I mean, yeah that's, 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 that's the bottom that's line the heart there. of it yeah yeah so the reason that i'm really drawn to the hero's journey as a concept is you know first of all i'm a writer so it's been kind of a useful tool just for plotting right. things out you know sometimes sometimes you don't want to actually have like a literal dragon to be faced but right it's kind of psychologically true no matter where you are right like there's always a dragon of some of some kind uh, that you're going to encounter. So it works well for stories. Yeah. And yeah. And then as sort of somebody who's interested in philosophy, I've always wondered like, what does it mean to be a person? And as I've thought through that, it's become clear to me that people are kind of just like animals with stories. Like we really are, yeah. you know, we're drawn to stories. So that framework just keeps like paying off dividends for me. Right. Um, did you want to say anything about like how you encountered it and what your relationship with it has been? Yeah, the hero's journey is kind of something that it's kind of one of our or, or probably the top priority in our work that we're doing as we're kind of we have this racket where we're Shani and I are typing people. And then when we get the exact same type, we'll then log those people away in these this growing database of, of people that we've objectively typed according right. to our procedure. And so then what will happen is from those large data sets of now thousands of people, very interesting patterns start to emerge, you know, seeing the different kind of types and stuff. And one of those patterns that we're very interested in is what creates a, an alpha or a beta or an adult or a child or however you want to phrase right. the, the wording here. Um, successful, you know, these, these terms are... They're kind of subjective depending on the person, but they're also kind of universal because like we do see the hero's journey that movies and ancient stories, there's some kind of, uni like Jordan Peterson talks about, some kind of universal standard that all of us kind of unconsciously know deep down. And so from these little collections of kind of hero type people, we're trying to mm -hmm. pull out the common patterns because it's spanning across all cultures and all personality types and everything else. And we're going, okay, what are the common traits that get somebody from being this kind of dependent child to a fully adult kind of hero alpha and then trying to really um, track those steps as kind of objectively and as accurately as we can from pulling mm -hmm. it through the data you know so yeah yeah because so even though even though it's like a universal kind of framework you still get a little bit of like the particulars right so like yeah Jordan Peterson becomes an alpha in a very different way than someone right. like uh, Tony Robbins becomes an alpha. Right, right, yeah. right. And I think a lot of it too is like kind of the, the subjective standard of what you're looking for in your own life. But I also think that there is an objective standard in this kind of a sense of what the tribe votes with with their views or their dollars. Um, when I first started in sales many years ago, it was like everybody was designing a web page however they thought was the best. And then this guy... Perry Belcher came along and he really revolutionized split testing and he he like beat into everybody's head. Like there's some objectivity here on what sells. Like, you know, the, the Amazon buy button now it's orange. Like people calibrate a little bit mm. bigger, a little bit smaller, this font, that font, and they can get these little sweet spots. And it's not subjective, like, oh, I like this button. 
it's look, we've dialed this in and the psychology and the numbers are here. And so there's some kind of a settling as mm -hmm. well as like movies like Star Wars that will rise to the top as far as how the audience. So there's some kind of an objective extroverted rating system you can go off of as far as what is a grown up, what is an alpha, what is successful. Um, and so from that, we're trying to really kind of work backwards and go, how could you reproduce that more purposefully? Because it seems like a lot of people will accidentally be successful, you know, hmm. defining your own terms here, um, yeah. and really not know how to reproduce it to the next generation, you know? So would you say that that, you said it's become an emphasis for you and Shan um, in your business, as far as like aggregating all of this data and seeing the patterns and wanting to be more intentional about it. Yeah. Are, is this something that's still in its infancy as far as like how you want to approach using the hero's journey? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like Shannon and I right now are just uh, stu beginning students in this alpha journey thing. And it's this is it really kind of hit us probably halfway through last year um, as we got to just just getting so much more data from getting to meet so many people last year and just the internet itself being able to download so many different successful stories of people out there. Like it wasn't like that when I was a kid where you can go through so many people's right. biographies so fast and so it's really been this last year that we were really going, wow, there's a lot here. Um, and so I feel like we're just beginning to kind of start our own journey of both personal growth as kind of like grownups as we're kind of like hitting right. 40 years old at that time, like we're, so we're supposed to be grownups. And then also like consciously being able to understand it, you know? So yeah. Interesting. So I know that we kind of go on these different uh, like there's sort of a cycle of the hero's journey, right? You're never yeah. done with the journey. Right. Um, but that, that being said, do you feel like you've gone through like the ringer already? Like have you, do you feel like you're still like in the middle of that journey or have you emerged? I, I think, well, both like depending on what you're, you're talking about, like yeah. I've definitely, I would say I've, emerged in the sense of where I was struggling with when I was 20 years old, 30 years old and a teenager, mm -hmm. where I was trapped in a circle of my own fears and my own panic and my own insecurities and just trapped in those tidal waves where I could only get so far in life. And then as more challenges would come in, I would get more stressed out, anxiety, fearful, blame, and then it would just collapse in on itself and I'd move to the next town and it would start all over again. Yeah. Um, with the 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 function stuff that we've been studying with the personality type stuff like a big life-changing thing is when we started to log people of, of all these types and then i could see once there was about five to seven guys that were all my exact same type and to see that they looked like me and that they had all had the same fears they say the same crazy stuff uh they all have the same anxieties the same, it's just weird you're just you're looking at you're talking you're looking into a mirror Mm -hmm. And they're from all around the world. And you just, it's embarrassing because you're like, oh, all these things that I do, all these fears that I say, they're all fearing the exact same thing. And all, it's just like you're waking up out of a dream, like, oh, this isn't real. Because then you look at people that are your opposite type, like say maybe somebody like yourself, you're mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I can get through that. I can get through that. I can get through that. And then I'm watching somebody like you, you're like, oh, but I'm stressing out about that. And then same with everybody of your type. So you're right. just kind of waking up out of the matrix going, oh, this isn't real. And so from there, it's, we were able to kind of apply as much of the quote unquote hero's journey as we could to where now, yeah, I feel like it's, it's, it, it's, um, the, the fears and anxieties are always still there, of course, but like, I don't believe in them anymore. So when I get stressed out or freaked out, that right. feeling will come. And then I'm like, ah, I know what that is. And then I can get it back down. And then therefore I can get to work on the problem. Cause I, the way I look at it is like, when you don't know what these fears are, they're like monsters that just harass you. And when you realize they're just problems, you can get them in a little box and you can work on them on your own time. Mm -hmm. So that's that's been a a huge kind of emergent. That has been a, a huge conquering thing for me because just struggling with fear and anxiety my whole life and finally kind of have that done. But now it's just like in the hero's journey. It's like, OK, what's over the next hill? You know, right. so now I've got challenges ahead of me that I've never faced before, never been able to take on, never saw because I've never gotten up to this level, you know, right. so. And then it kind of just starts all over again, you know? Yeah. And it, it seems to me like you have to go through the more internal uh, sort of psychological journey before you can actually start making yeah. those strides out in the world. Right. Um, but on the other hand, like every time you're doing those external battles, you're always going to discover something new within yourself right. too. So it's kind of tightly right. together. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. I don't I don't think they can get too far ahead of each other. For example, seeing a lot of young 20 year old kids that will get very successful on YouTube, they'll be like massively externally successful. Uh, but then internally, they're still kids and it just it just falls over in a few years, you know, right. and it just it's got to get relatively balanced eventually. Yeah. And so that becomes part of their like their actual journey. The story is only starting. They have this downfall. Right. They thought they were the prince that was promised. But then. Right. Yeah. How do you how do you cope with the after? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's just, just one little side point there, like something that people don't usually think about. But like. I've learned in life to to be careful and be a little bit cautious and fearful of something that's too good. If you find if you there's a lot of great money making opportunities out there or great relationships or amazing opportunities you can find yourself in where all of a sudden you'll go from zero to 100. Like you you move to the right city, you get hooked up with the right people and your life takes off. You got to be careful because like it could be externally awesome. And then you because you internally can't take it, you just start freaking out and shutting it down. And that's largely what happened to me in my late 20s and early 30s with the RC business that we had. It got a little bit too, um, I wouldn't say successful, but it got a little bit too, more than I could handle externally. Right. And I couldn't, I didn't have the internal structure or discipline to support it. So it collapsed because of me, not because yeah. of the, the outside world, you know? Oh, okay. So there was like a, there was a crash. Yeah. From, from within more of an implosion. Yeah. You know, we're just yeah. like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this. I hate this. I'm, I'm tired of all that stuff. And like, you just have this grumpy, burned down owner. And, <laughs> and the customer's like, this is great. Keep going. We're, we're throwing our money. I don't want your money. I don't want you to get out of here. You're like, what is wrong with this guy? You know? Yeah. So going slow, keeping it, keeping it balanced. You know, I, I hear that. Um, <laughs> I, I'm definitely a slow mover, but I'm moving. Yeah. Um, so with the hero's journey, um, I think that it can kind of be a little inaccessible to people. Like if you Googled hero's journey and then you saw right. the 17 different stages and they all right. seem really abstract and disconnected from life, um, that's a problem. But one thing that I've liked about your, your YouTube series on the hero's journey is that you're trying to make it a little more concrete, a little more manageable, uh, yeah. practical. How would you like get rid of those 17 stages? How would you describe the basic steps of the journey from a more concrete standpoint. Yeah, um, really good. And I would say for anybody listening, I would say really the best thing to do is, especially who have FI, because you could just kind of emotionally lock on and not worry about the logic, is really find your favorite v movie, whether it's Matrix or Thor or, or Star Wars or something that has a good hero story in it. And then mm -hmm. just watch that thing a million times. So you can kind of have that, what would Jesus do bracelet on you? So you're like, oh, what would Thor do here? Sure. What would Neo do here? And you just kind of have that instinctually just because you've watched the movie so many times, because it's not so much about what exact step and what exact order, because there is no wizard in your town. Right. There is no mentor. You're, you're stuck in your room by yourself. So there's certain you know, there's no elixir, you know, You're hitting a little too close to home right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so like, it, it seems to be basically, it's the bottom line transition seems to be from a, 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 a low conscious, low responsibility child to a higher conscious, higher responsibility adult. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's a journey of an identity change where the child starts to learn, wait a minute, there's a lot more to this world than just what I like to look at. And I'm also responsible for it. And so that seems to be the bottom line from what we're kind of seeing. And so along the journeys, there's a lot of kind of tests where the child is being kind of pulled out of their little narrow, unconscious, irresponsible zone and starting to have to take up some of the responsibilities. That's why it's it's why it's like a good hero's journey is kicked off with the parents dying, with the hometown burning down. Because now you're just like the kids stuck with like, oh, wait a minute. And now the mentor and the friends have got to come in and help them go, look, you now have to own all this stuff and then fix whatever problem destroyed your town. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to start learning how to do all these tools and all these responsibilities that your parents told you one day you'd have to do, but you ignored them, right? <laughs> and it's slowly kind of taking that on until finally the the child is learning how to do these things but then finally accepting that oh wait this is the way it is just a little side note on that i think everybody goes through this when they hit their 30s or 40s or they have a kid or whatever and there's that moment where they finally realize oh it's over i'm not i'm not a kid anymore you know maybe like when you go from mm -hmm. high school to college like you'll have that same feeling too like oh party's the party's over the party's ending 
<laughs> and it's it's something to where because it's like the child is going, what do I got to do to get through this? So I, so it's over. But it's this realization that it's never over. You're now you're now responsible for this forever and you have to take right. in these new skills and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so then the journey is then exciting of maybe it's a chase into the dragon or maybe it's this or maybe it's that. So there's a whole bunch of different fun challenges that this unique person has got to go through. But at the end, it's almost a death of letting go of the selfishness, letting go of the unconsciousness, choosing to see more and therefore be more responsible. Right. A quick parallel on that, because what we really found is like, it's not like a hero. It's a, it's an adult, you know, that makes it more practical. You're like, ah, oh, right. it's just becoming an adult. That sucks. Yep, that's it. And like Joseph Campbell's work of, um, uh, what do they call uh, rites of passages? I think you know mm -hmm. when when yeah when when kids become adults, and how a lot of native cultures had a very distinct mile marker to cross. Like here in the United States, they're like, oh, when you're 18, you're an adult. It's like that's that's not bad, but like that day will come and go it's so blurry you don't realize wait i'm it's not like any other day it's any other day yeah. yeah but like in these cultures that seem to have kind of accidentally evolutionarily got it right they're like look we're going to beat the crap out of you you're going to stay up for a few days we're going to throw stuff at you we're going to scare you we're going to traumatize you and we're going to put a lot of pressure under you and then when it's over then all the responsibilities are on you the whole tribe treats you differently you're now the responsible one you come hunting with the adults no one's gonna wipe your butt anymore and there's a distinct before and after transition therefore the kid can look forward to that happening know that it happened and then the life changes after and so like right. the hero's journey seems to be like forcing that 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 line in the child's or not the child but the person's mind of everything before this event i was a kid everything after this event i'm now an adult Hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like a person can manufacture that for themselves or yeah. force themselves into that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think in today's age where we don't live in the farm and we don't have natural probiotics from the dirt because we're playing in the dirt or natural sunlight because we're stuck inside in Portland, Oregon. And like, we have to rely on all of our technology to simulate it or supplement it. And the reality is <laughs> there's there's going to be no Romans coming around the hillside, threatening your family and forcing you to grow up. It's just not going to happen. You, yeah. You'll be a large generation, like people from my age all the way down to your age and, and, and even younger are stuck in this like, I can just kind of hang out in quote unquote mom's house forever, whether it's at a friend's house or an apartment mm -hmm. or whatever. And there's no force into growth just because of the culture that we're in right now and our technology. So it is absolutely forcing yourself to get in on that journey. And I think the more we can educate ourselves human mind wise, like understand these movies and understand this, this kind of pattern, the more we can then kind of be our own mentors and coaches to kind of throw ourselves into these things. And that can be as simple as joining, um, you know, a martial arts place down the street, something that's a little bit uncomfortable that gets you into the animal world. Maybe if you're a little bit more masculine, you want to do that, or maybe it's joining the Boy Scouts, or maybe it's joining, uh, helping the homeless people down uh, downtown or whatever. Something that is, you're, you know what you're doing. Like, oh, I have to put myself out of my comfort zone. I have to put myself in a do or die situation. I have to force myself into something I don't want to do. I'm going to need to have some authority from another mentor that's going to hold me to it because I'm going to want to run away. But this is what I know I need to do and I want to do and can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's tricky about that is it's really hard to find a situation that's actually do or die, right? Yeah. Like there's always something to fall back on, especially given like how comfortable most people are in our society anyhow. Right. Um, so I've been trying to think about how to apply that to my own life and um, something that I've always wanted to do as somebody who is, you know, demon SI and demon sleep is go on a meditation retreat like yeah. Just force myself to like give myself over to that experience. Right. And um and go into it thinking like this is going to be transformative. This is going to be, you know, the start of a journey where I'm taking more responsibility for all of my my strengths and my weaknesses. Right. Um and I think that I, I think you'll probably agree with this, but feel free to disagree, obviously. Um I think that using your middle two functions is a really good way to kind of get that going because I can think of good reasons, like good TI reasons to, yeah. to better myself. And I really hate to let other people down right. and let them feel disappointed. So I would hate to just like 
you know, break some Buddhist monk's heart <laughs> on right. a meditation retreat. Right. Totally. And that's, that's kind of the kind of games that we are always playing with ourselves. How can mm -hmm. I corner myself three against one? Can I get my two middle functions and my top function against my lower function that's not going mm -hmm. along? So that's, that's, I think, is, is a great way to do it. You know, because you're getting some accountability from the outside world as well as accountability from other sectors of your brain. You know, so you can kind of argue and talk yourself into it when you know you're wanting to get out of it. So I think it's great. That's what we do. Yeah, you got to harness your uh, better parts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And one last thing too, there on them, um, uh, how to manage to 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 manufacture this stuff. It's very hard. One thing that that we're kind of doing because we're suffering from the same thing, like especially now that like we're older, we're a little bit more settled. You know, we're not on a financial roller coaster anymore. Like life is not life threatening like it used to be. Um, and so what we're thinking is kind of this concept of handicap ramp versus the stairs. And so like, rather than like an abrupt, large, you have to go from here to here event, and it's very traumatizing. It's like you're just joining the gym and you gotta go start bench pressing 200 pounds, ready or not, ready to go. Rather than something like that would enforce a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, a lot of growth, setting these smaller but more frequent little goals so you're kind of doing this handicap ramp rather than this abrupt jump that we've been having a lot of progress on and it's been more realistic it's been mm -hmm. more realistic to set these like i'm talking like ridiculously small micro goals where we're even now as we're getting better at this it's coming down to like by the hour because i used to like plan for the year then the month and the week and all that. now like i can set goals that are you know basically an hour to two hours apart and actually be accountable to do them. And again, it's just kind of building that discipline of I'm gonna do something I don't wanna do and I'm gonna get it done. And I'm gonna build the the promises to myself that way. And, and I can attack larger projects over time using that handicap ramp because I don't have a do or die gun to my head that I have to do right now, you know? Right. Yeah, I think that, so in my case, I definitely attempt to meditate you know, in, in increments and, you know, up the amount of time that I'm sitting. Yeah. So I think, so for me, I wouldn't be trying to force myself. I kind of realize that that's sort of a self-defeating kind of behavior to throw yourself into something, throw yourself to the wolves. Right. Um, so I think maybe there's a sweet spot for me anyway, where I'm sort of building these skills and then I just have something that feels ceremonial and feels like, right. a, you know, a jumping point, like, I'm ready to do this and now I've done it and I have, you know, built the muscle to do it. Right. But it is a tricky thing to, to keep balanced. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I think the key is keeping it moving like a workout, whether you want to do heavy weights every once in a while or lighter weights more often. The, the point is, um, well, one thing that Shani and I were kind of really kind of talking about really this morning is because, so here's a, here's an, any side tangent for you. Um, we were we were really looking at like firstborns like because we had studied mm -hmm. this years ago about the statistics on so do, don't quote me on this but maybe maybe check this out something the effect of like and i heard this years ago because i'm going off of old spider web cobweb memories here there's something <laughs> like 20 to 22 astronauts like 19 of them were first born mm -hmm. and then a couple of them were only children and the, the point is like the statistics of like firstborn kids are it's trackable there's something going on with right. with firstborn kids and that that firstborn could be somebody who is a middle child but they've been kind of given the birthright as the firstborn because their their older sister was kind of a wimp and then they took over or whatever yeah. the point is like it could be something along the lines that like some kids learn at a young age that they are the man or the woman of their household because their parents are wimps their siblings need babysat. There's an age gap. Their their mom's an alcoholic. Something to where the kid learns, I am the king or queen of my kingdom, because it's kind of again what I was saying earlier. Like the hero's journey is about the child realizing that they are conscious. They need to be more conscious and they need to be responsible. And some kids seem to learn that due to their upbringing, and therefore when they get into their twenties and thirties. It's natural to them. Of course, they got to pay their own bills. Of course, they got to move forward. Of course, they got to take care of everybody else. That's what they've kind of learned yeah. their whole life. Um, so that that kind of again, like for me, it's like I always want to know what is the why. Like I'll figure out, like oh, when you do a workout, it's breaking down the muscles and the protein builds it back up stronger. And you need to hit it with a certain amount of frequency so it knows to, 
you know, at, to, to keep it there. Like, okay, if I can understand the concept, I can then figure out the nuts and bolts along the way. So it's like, what, what is, what is the universe trying to do when it's trying to grow me up into a man? Oh, it's trying to break you down. So you're more conscious of stuff and not so narrowed in and you're more responsible for everything. And you're learning that you are the man of the house, that there's nobody coming to save you. So if that mm -hmm. thing's leaking over there or that person's upset, or there's a problem over there, that's your responsibility. I'm like, Oh, well, if that's what it's trying to do. Then if I can be more conscious of that and kind of pull lessons from, yeah, remember when I was a kid and I had to babysit my younger brothers? That was the right state that I was there that I need to be here, you know? And then from there, what silly little exercises do I need to do each day to kind of work out that end goal? So that's kind of how I've been looking at it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, this is kind of not quite a tangent, but I'm throwing it back a little bit to the idea of forcing yourself to like activate those demons and go on the yeah. journey. Um, what do you think it would look like for somebody who had demon, I guess, demon self, whatever, whatever function, either TI or FI, like how, do, what would you do? What would you recommend to somebody who was trying to work through that and force themselves to deal with it? Yeah. So Shani has demon self, you know, she has yeah. FI identity last. Um, and that's, that's definitely hard. I, I, from, from watching her and watching others, it's definitely hard if like your own identity is the demon because the person is constantly looking for the outside world for direction, advice, opinions, what should, what should they do? And it seems to be like the largest thing that they've got to really focus in and, and, and grow first. It does seem to be, at the end of the day, the universe doesn't seem to really care. It doesn't seem to care if you're sleep last or sleep first or demon identity or not. Like it, it one thing that I remember when I was studying the kind of the hero's journey, like really looking at, you know, all the 17 steps and trying to figure out what does that really mean in real life, you know, trying to relate to them and stuff. Mm -hmm. It really felt to me that like on these quote unquote 17 steps or whatever, that there's going to be some bridges in life. that are going to be very easy for me to cross and, and very hard for you. And then the other way around, you know, and it may be at the beginning of the journey or at the end of the journey or whatever. So I think for a lot of the demon identity types, they have a very hard time starting. But once they get going, because they usually are more extroverted because of that extroverted decider savior, they can kick butt a little bit better on the back end mm -hmm. where the introverted deciders have a little bit harder time because once they get that elixir, once they get that, they're finally like a man of their household. And now they're getting a little drained helping everybody else on the back end. <laughs> you know, they pay for yeah. it there, you know? So that's that's something I've kind of looked at. Um, but then just also really respected the ruthlessness of the universe. It just doesn't care what's hard for you or not you gotta everybody's got to do it you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so there's has... there's some non-advice <laughs> I, I think it's advice luckily <laughs> i don't need that advice yeah um, luckily we dodged that one right we'll pay yeah we'll pay our price on the back end i'll worry about that later <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah uh one thing that i find really interesting about this whole framework is the idea of responsibility and like I, I kind of, I don't remember an exact moment when I had this thought, but I remember like in, in stages coming to the realization that even if I'm not technically responsible right. for things that are going wrong, if they're bothering me, who else is going to fix them? Right. And then like slowly feeling like I'm becoming like a super powered version of myself because I, <laughs> because I have like a shitty system for collecting trash in my room now. Right. You know, that's such a, it's so weird how little it takes for you to start feeling that sense of momentum. Right, right. Yeah, it really does. Like the, the most responsible human being I've ever seen in the world is Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm. If you go to his channel, hit on most popular and kind of watch his videos in reverse of, of what's been res really resonating with people. He really hammers home how he sees himself responsible for everything. And of course, talking about as well, like, there's things in life, especially when you're younger, where you are going to be uh, a victim of something or something is going to be extremely out of your control. But especially as you get older, 15, 20, 25, that ability to call victim dramatically diminishes because you have the skills to work around it or solve it, you know, and, and, and stop promoting it or allowing it to some mm -hmm. degree. Uh, and Gary Vaynerchuk even talks, goes as far, and he's joking and stuff, but he says, like, when it rains outside, it's his fault. And so it's like, okay, if you were to, wait a minute, what is he doing here? So if you were to put your mindset in this, this ridiculous, unrealistic state of responsibility, 
you would be gobbling up just 10 times the amount of unfairness every day. That is obviously it's not your fault. Obviously it's not your responsibility. But if you were to just absorb that and not get pissed off about it and then get that thing done, what would that mean? You know, like right. for me on my journey, like I had been for, for low SE, I've been resisting stuff like house maintenance my whole life. Just can't deal with the physical <laughs> sensor. You can relate to that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, even though my dad is a general contractor and a very successful one. Mm. And so like, I have like literally lived with a guy for 20 years who's like one of the best guys in the Bay Area, like taking care of houses and literally building them by hand. And like, I don't know how to change out a doorknob. And, and so then by the time I hit my 20s and 30s, it's like, I finally moved into this house here that we're in now. And it was a complete disaster. It was like something out of a movie. There was the, the, the basement was flooding with sewage and there's rats in the attic and under, just, it was like out of a movie. And mm -hmm. we got stuck in here in the middle of winter. We shouldn't have been here. Our old landlord got busted by the feds. So we had to move out quick. It was just, Whoa. it was just out of a movie, right? So like, <laughs> there's like alligators involved. So like, we're, we're like, we end up in this house and it's like the ultimate unfair situation and the mm. neighbors were like hey sorry sorry you moved into this house man you really got screwed this house has been neglected the guy next door he's been here he's like 60 something he's been here since he's a, a kid he grew up in this the, the neighbor's house so he knows the whole house history he's like yeah your house is a real lemon sorry you got screwed and so it was the most unfair situation ever mm -hmm. in in the housing things and it was in my demons right and so i thought yeah. i thought there would never be a worse time than this there would never be a more unfair situation and never be a more impossible situation. All of my outside friends and family say, get out. It's not your fault. It's not your responsibility. Cut your losses and move on. And I just say, decided to stay. And that was like my moment, like Neo in the matrix where you turn around to the, to the agents and you're like, no, no more running, no more fear, no more playing this game where, oh, I'm afraid of my demons. I'm afraid of responsibility. I'm afraid of chaos. I'm gonna stand my ground right here because if I could beat this house, then I could beat any house and I can beat my internal fears. Mm -hmm. Well, that took three and a half years working around the clock. That freaking sucks. Well, we went through all of my savings and and it just, it really broke me down, but it finally gave me that responsibility of of breaking fee, uh, free from those fears. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's finally kind of turning around and standing your ground against the demons. And like mm. that ever since then, it was like getting free from the, not my fault monster not my fault i'm not responsible um and it's like you had to have a you have to have a a larger goal and a larger vision of yourself because it's like why would i stop here in my 30s and spend all this money and all this time on somebody else's house it's not even mine it's a rental house like why would i waste all that it's like because i'm learning to stand my ground and fight and beat my demons now and that is going to pay off for me exponentially in my 40s because if i could right. get through that then i could get through anything on the other side so that hyper responsibility mindset, and I, I would have to say that it was Gary Vaynerchuk that really helped me to to ever dare to even think that outrageous, you know? Right. I'm guessing that because you spent so much time getting your house in order, like once Jordan Peterson came on the scene, you were yeah. like, this guy is onto something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. It was really great. It was really great to hear him say exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it was very encouraging because I didn't have that when I was going through it. I was just kind of walking by faith, you know, didn't have right. anybody else to really kind of say the same thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And one thing I like about um, what Gary Vaynerchuk said about the rain being responsible for, you know, it raining. Yeah. Even if you're not technically responsible for that. Yeah. You didn't check the weather. You there don't you have an umbrella. You don't have a raincoat. You know, you're not preparing for it. And even in the worst case scenario where you're completely prepared it's still your responsibility, the kind of like mindset you have as yeah. far as like letting something like unexpected rain impact you or ruin right. your day. That's so, it. Yeah. That's it. That almost it. reminds right. me of Brene Brown a little bit and like the, well, am I going to allow this? Is this right. like checking the validity of, right. of these thoughts that cause negative emotions? Right, exactly. Because there's like everything you just rattled off right there. There's a whole list inside your brain ready to go to, to get around this problem or solve it. In, in this creative way of thinking that you would never have access to if you just sat there and stayed in that emotions of this sucks. Mm -hmm. Shani and I had this today. There was some, there was something that upset her with, what was it? It was, um, 
there was a uh, there was some email we got of somebody was jerking her around and kind of running her in circles. So we were having breakfast. She's just going on this good rant, and after about five minutes, she's like, "Okay, now that I've got all the emotions out, now I need to switch gears and calm down so I can get the other side of my brain, so I can get mm -hmm. access to basically what you did there and think through. All right, so how can we make this a better situation? You know, yeah. it's just it's tempting. You want to stay in that freak out state, and you never get access to that good stuff. But on the other side, it's okay to freak out for yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. It's okay to be mad and upset and feel like a victim. But if it's an hour later, like, hey, come on, let's change gears and get moving. Mm -hmm. That's something that's been so hard for me to internalize. I would just prefer to avoid the freak out as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm coming to see the benefit of it right. and to make space for it. But it's hard. It's I, hard. I scared Shani with that when we first started really kind of getting close to working together. I told her flat out to her face. I'm like, look, I'm going to yell and scream and be a freak out. And I'm going to tantrum and cry and be a baby. And I'm not that's not going to stop. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's 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 dramatically. But I, what I will do what I did promise her, which has happened to some degree, is like that will get smaller uh, over time. So I don't freak out for long periods of time i can get that way down to a really good couple minute rant and then i'm i'm able to switch gears yeah and i've learned that from watching people close to me that would do the reverse very intensely where they would resist they're always trying to be happy and always trying to to, to not get any negativity and then that would work but then they would start thinking of weird stuff and then worst of all every year they would have a massive blowout where it would all come out at once yeah. You know, yeah. I'm like, oh, there is no getting away from that, is there? <laughs> so I've just learned to kind of laugh at it, be humorous about it. Let people mm -hmm. like you see it on our videos. I'll be very when I get frustrated, I'll get frustrated. And then I yeah. just let it flow right through, you know, and then you just tell your friends and family, look, this is what I'm going to do. And honestly, most people accept it. They think it's funny. They think you're a little weird, but right. You know, that's what you got to do. Do you explain the reasoning? Like I usually do, I do this I, so that I don't have a major. I do, explosion I do. Thing. I think you feel them like thinking, like I wish I could do that. You know, I wish, I wish I had the boldness mm -hmm. to actually do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a challenging path to walk. I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish I had the boldness to do that. Yeah, you eventually will because there's no other way to do it. You can't hold it in. Right. And if if you're pushing yourself, you think about it like when we would work on high performance RC airplanes, like pushing them super like you had to deal with all the extra heat from the motors and the components and stuff. And you had to have a, a plan for that if you're going to run it at those high RPM. So if you're going to be pushing yourself in life where you're really making stuff happen, you're going to be burning the gaskets and you've got to know how to let that heat off because you're not just moseying through life where everything's cool. and You don't have anger burnt uh, building up. The point is you're in a position where you're coming apart at the seams because you want to force that growth. So you got to know how to get rid of that stress because of the situation you're putting yourself in right you know? yeah i want to bring it back to gary vanderchuk for a second um yeah. a key a key element to the hero's journey regardless of what model that what model you're looking at is the idea of how having allies and mentors and i know that you've kind of encouraged people to seek out like digital mentors if they can't find right. you know, someone in their life then find somebody whose content you can consume let them right. inspire you um i guess first of all I'm curious to know, I, I know personally, but I want to share with my audience, yeah. like what sort of people you've been drawn to. And then do you feel like there's any like typological element to that? Like, are you drawn to people of a similar type or are they pretty different from you? I think I'm largely drawn for people that are different than me. Mm -hmm. um, I know Jack Ma is the same or similar type as me. And the, the guy does Alibaba, uh, Alibaba in China. Mm -hmm. um, and he's very funny and I really like him a lot, but I don't find myself like going to him for answers because he's just saying stuff that I'm kind of already saying to myself anyways. Yeah. Kind of doubling down on stuff that I'm already doing. Um, I do find that I go to C.T. Fletcher. He's very different than me. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Robbins, um, Owen Cook. Um, and then I'll have a whole group of people and I'll kind of just kind of rotate them around. Um, and I seem to use them for people that are different and to kind of triangulate and then for different areas, like I don't, I don't go to Gary Vaynerchuk for anything like deep and internal or or literal. Like if I'm actually trying to solve something on, you know, in, in um, business or tools or something more practical, mm -hmm. you know, like he's more of like confidence, goal setting, marketing, you know, presenting stuff like that. 
Um, and so it does feel very much like you're just getting these different teachers for these different sections in your life that you got to cover. But I think the point is like, on average, getting about five to 10, you know, that book of you are the average of the five yeah. people you hang out with or whatever, that concept is very true. And when you can get a little bit wider of a spectrum, it really starts to overlap a lot of the gaps, you know? Yeah. Uh, I've uh, I've been really thinking through that lately. I made a video for my channel where I walk through my objective personality uh, yeah, right. experience. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mentioned that it's really reassuring to have people like Jordan Peterson to look at and say, okay, well, like what sort of journey has he gone through? Right. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have Joel Osteen, who's somebody that I don't like very much. Right. But he's an ISFJ, and yeah. um, we're almost completely flipped. There are a few right. things that are not quite right, <laughs> and it's like, what can I, what can I learn from this guy? I'm sure yeah. I can learn something. You know, him being the opposite, and then right. uh, I looked at the uh, Neil deGrasse Neil deGrasse Tyson video you guys yeah. did. And, you know, he's an ENTP with, you know, double masculine yeah. modalities. And so, like, there's something to learn there, too. But I guess it all goes back to the idea of having this vision of what you want. And then you kind of meet these different needs to get there. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And a side note on that, the, the, the vision I find at times kind of gets eclipsed by whatever goals you have in front of you. Because... Hmm. A lot of what what I saw kind of growing up is like the when we were kids, it's like, oh, I want to be a fireman. I want to be an office guy. I want to work at IBM. Like they, they were we were trained to have like very literal jobs because the, the thinking was those jobs are going to be around forever. Yeah. And and now it's like, oh, jobs are evaporating constantly. So it's like, okay, so how do you still what is that vision then if it's not going to be the literal job that's going to be, you know, obsolete or outsourced in 20 years anyways? But like that the vision of the identity is still there. Like, oh, what do you what do you mean you want to be a fireman? Oh, I want to be strong, I want to be confident, I want to have a family, I want to be able to tackle yeah. emergencies. Okay, wait a minute. You could do that here, 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 and here, and all these other businesses, not necessarily driving a red truck. Mm -hmm. And so, like, oh, so that's what I'm really looking for in that identity. And so yeah. that that abstract identity is kind of always there. I want to be a strong, confident, grown up, the provider, the person that can conquer challenges. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, it's the like an archetype and it right. latches on to a particular, yeah. Right. And then the task. So here's here's how, why, when, and where you'll eventually be begging to consume more Joel Osteen videos is when you have this this boulder in the way as you're trying to get around it to your, your identity goal out there and you realize that the blast sleep method and using a lot of FE and over preparing is the only tool that's going to get you around this challenge in life. And then you'll be like desperate to go consume the yeah. Joel Osteen stuff. You know, otherwise you'll never, you'll never be like, well, let me go download a bunch of this stuff. Like, why am I learning this? And my, my friend Matt taught me that when we were in the RC business, he's like, look, Dave, you're never going to learn CAD until you have that project where you have to learn CAD to get the project done. Hmm. And that was so true. That was so true because what are you going to sit down and just learn that stuff for fun? So yeah, so that's that that comes with time. You'll definitely as long as you know where to go to look for the resources. You know, oh here's a problem and it needs blast sleep. Let me call Joe Osteen. Okay, great. That key un unlocks this door and on you go. Do you have his number by the way? I, I don't. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> um. Yeah. That's that's a fair. A fair I'm sure point. if you had it, he'd pick it up and be like, "Hi, <laughs> how y'all doing?" Yeah, got to hit me with that FE. You'd call him up and you'd be like, uh, Joel, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a character. I, yeah. I do want to watch more of his videos just to get a better sense of him because I have a very like I have a, a picture in my head of who he is. And yeah, I don't know that it's entirely fair. Right. But maybe maybe it is. Maybe it's yeah. accurate. Um, awesome. Yeah, I, I think I need to incorporate uh, some of his demeanor into my life and then a little bit of Neil deGrasse Tyson's uh, wrestling. Yeah. Energy, you know? Yeah, the masculine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we see that with, um, yeah, double feminines of like the, the sexual energies of like learning when to punch and learning when to roll with it. It's a great lesson. It's something that Shani and I have had to really kind of learn. In, in business and presenting and stuff with people like when to be punchy and shovey and aggressive and when to be soft and movable, you know, mm -hmm. and there's consequences to getting that in reverse, you know, if you're too 
nice when you should be pushy, you know, you'll end up paying for that. And so just kind of getting all that calibrated and right. watching other people is a great way to learn it fast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, Dave, I'm very conscious of your time and I think that you need to be hitting the road if I'm yeah, man. Yeah. But I really appreciate you uh, appearing on the channel and for having this talk with me. Yeah, dude. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. It's um, it's fun to watch you uh, put this all together and figure it out and grow <laughs> on your journey here. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, man. All right. Have Catch a good later. One. Bye.